The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel as written to us by Matthew. The Lenten season always begins with this same gospel of the temptation of Jesus in the desert. He has gone into the desert for 40 days for his own initiation, as it were. And this is a beautiful telling, I think, of the demons we all have to face to grow up to become mature. And if we'll take just a few minutes afterwards to try to explain it, but they're all three temptations to the misuse of power. And we all, it seems, want power in one way or another, but we'll talk about that later. And there's good power and there's bad power. But with that, Let's read from the text. At that time, Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was hungry. The tempter approached and said to him, if you are the Son of God, Command that these very stones become loaves of bread. He said in reply, It is written, One does not live on bread alone, but in every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and made him stand on the parapet of the temple. And he said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you. And with their hands, they will support you, lest you even dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered, again it is written, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Finally, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in their magnificence. And he said to him, all these I shall give to you if you will prostrate yourself and worship me. At this, Jesus said, get away, Satan. It is written, the Lord your God shall you worship, and him alone shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. This is the gospel of the Lord. All right. Our first reading was, of course, the, the first temptation in the book of Genesis that, according to the story, both Adam and Eve fall subject to. The second reading is such a complex piece of theology, it's taken my whole life to try to figure out what Paul is trying to say, so I won't lay that on you. doesn't mean it's not inspired, but... It's not easy to work with. Now this gospel is rather straight and to the point. Let's go back a little bit. Why is Jesus supposedly going on what we would call a private retreat? He's self-initiating. He doesn't go like you would do to a retreat house and get a good Jesuit spiritual director and be guided. He's all on his, on his own. And he just empties out, empties out. Symbolized by fasting and getting hungrier and hungrier. Maybe not allowing himself quick answers so he'd find deeper answers. 
Notice that the first two are preceded by the same phrase, if you are the son of God. The primary temptation we all face is to doubt our divine identity. Every one of us in this room. That's what the evil one says to you too. If you are a daughter of the Lord, well, I'm bad, I'm ordinary, I did this, I did that. You all can think of a thousand reasons, I hope not that many, but at least a few, to condemn yourself. So that's the first temptation you have to overcome, the doubting of your identity. And once you doubt that, it's all downhill from there. But what made Jesus special, it seems, is he never doubted that he was God's beloved son. Then, the first temptation is a temptation to the misuse of power. Maybe we could say to be spectacular, to be special, to be important, to be showy, to be on, you know, everybody's got talent or something. <laughs> uh, he will command his angels and they, with their hands, they will support you lest you dash your foot against a stone. When we're young, we all want that. We all want to stand out. We want people to notice us. We want to be special. We want to show that we are special in God's son. But he refuses to play the game. Then a second temptation. The devil takes him to the holy city and made him stand on the very pinnacle of the temple. Again, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down. And here we have the only time in the whole Bible where the devil quotes the scriptures. Isn't that interesting? He will command his angels and with their hands they will support you lest you dash your foot against a stone to uh, put God to the test. And so Jesus says, I'm not going to play the religious game either. So the second great temptation is to the misuse of religion. To uh, play games with God. We've all done it. Sometimes it seems like we Catholics were trained to do it. Say this many Hail Marys and it'll happen. Pray for nine days and the miracle will take place. Uh, that's religion by technique. Religion by formula. You don't grow up if you stay there. A lot of Catholics stay there much of their life. Um, so, no, it isn't okay. Well, it's okay to start with. God makes everything okay. He'll work with anything. But if you stay there, it's all about the new phrase we've all learned after the hearings, quid pro quo. Hmm? I do this for God, God does this for me. It's transactional religion as opposed to transformational. What, what religion is about is real transformation changing your mind toward love, changing your heart toward community, changing your body toward living in the present moment. And that's a lot of changing. So religion is probably at the earlier stages always transactional. We made it in our Catholic church a little checklist baptized, confirmed, First Communion, walked up the aisle in a Catholic church. I guess that's nice, but I hope you're not offended when I say, I don't think God cares. <laughs> I'd rather have you walk up the aisle of a Methodist church 
uh, with love and commitment and caring than walk up a Catholic aisle and it's just a formula. And you know what I'm talking about. Some of my own nieces and nephews talked all through my wonderful sermon, <laughs> but I just endured it. <laughs> and wouldn't you know it, that particular marriage didn't last. I'm not saying they were punished or anything, but there was no presence there was no depth, there was no realization of, of something could be happening to me. How can I allow it to happen? And then the third, I guess I would call the temptation that we're all talking about these days, the temptation to political power. It's not inherently wrong. I see we have the mayor here today, so I better not say it is. <laughs> it really isn't. There's got to be a way you can use power for good. But until you're tested, until you don't need it too much, you will almost always misuse it, almost always. They always say, don't, you know, appoint or assign the guy who needs to be a priest too much, or the guy who needs to be president too much. Of course, they've got to sell themselves. We know that. But it's unfortunate. So here's how it's described in really wonderful mythic language. The devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in their magnificence, showed him from Sandia Peak, all of beautiful Albuquerque, lit up at night. Who wouldn't want to reign over that, huh? And he said to them, him, all this I will give to you if you will prostrate yourself and worship me. Very often, if you're not tested in the ways of power, you end up worshiping power to have power. <laughs> and you can't do that because it becomes an end in itself. And it is not an end in itself. Power is for the sake in a mature person of other people's good, not your own reelection, not your own fame, not so you can be, what kind of genius is he? Some kind of, uh, what's the word he used? Stable. stable, yes. Not so you can be a stable genius, but so you can serve the people of God. It's rare, we gotta admit. And that's why for years I gave those male initiation rites up at Ghost Ranch to grow up men so men wouldn't need power so much and then abuse it as they almost always do when they need it too much when it becomes a substitute for their identity when they don't know who they are when they don't know who God is in them, through them, with them, as them, you're going to grab at external things, costumes like I am on. This makes me special. I don't think so. It's just a function. It's just a role. If it helps, I guess it's fine. But I could really do this dressed in jeans and a T-shirt. Most of you wouldn't like it, but I don't think God cares. Most of these things are man-made rules and we fall in love with the rules instead of what they're pointing us toward. Everybody does it, not just Catholics, not just Christians. He showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their magnificence. And he said, all these I will give to you if you just prostrate yourself 
and worship me. At this, Jesus said to him, get away from me, Satan. The Lord your God shall you worship, and him alone shall you serve. What religion at its most mature level means is after all is said and done, at the end of the day, there is one goal. There is one source. There is one focus. There is one meaning, and it's outside yourself. It's not about you making more money. It's not about you being famous and on everybody's got talent. I hope you're all on everybody's got talent. But you know the trouble with that? Only one person wins. It's a zero-sum game. What we were given in the gospel is an agenda in which everybody wins. You're all equally in this room, sons and daughters of God. And so you're all equally going to come to the table to be fed by the same bread. The devil left him then, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. Maybe the angels can't come till you pass these tests, till you recognize who you are and what you don't need. And what you don't need are all kinds of power trips, usually taking the form of money, fame, sex, control. We all fall probably more than once. And maybe you got to do each fall one or two times before you realize these climbing to the top trips mean very little. I've quoted many times over the years, maybe not here, but in other places. Thomas Merton, our wonderful American Catholic mystic monk, He said, you spend your whole life climbing to the top of the ladder. And you get to the top of the ladder and you realize there's nothing up there. 